Hello everyone, I am Miss Benita and I live and teach in Seattle, Washington. And today I'm helping my Denver teacher friend, Miss Fung, with this unit, Changing Landforms. And we are in the last chapter, chapter four, and on the second lesson, modeling how landforms erode quickly. You will need the packet. And if you don't have the packet to write with or on, you can just use a regular piece of paper and a writing utensil that you have at home. Welcome. All right, in the last session, we observed a pattern that landforms with cracks or landforms made of loose materials can erode quickly. You may want to return to this part of your packet and look at the questions that you wrote. You might have answers to those questions and those answers can be moved to the what we know column and you may have new questions. You can use this throughout the rest of this chapter as well. All right, this video has two activities and we will start with comparing models. Let's talk a little bit about the word model and how scientists use model. Models in science are something that scientists make to answer questions about the real world. And since we're studying how landforms change quickly, we can't really look at a landform as it's changing quickly. So we have to use a model to represent what's happening when landforms change quickly. So we use this book to investigate that very uh, subject, eroding quickly. And there are three questions in your packet and you can answer those by writing down your answers. You can talk with a family member about your thinking or you can just think about it in your head. So go ahead and pause the video so that you can take a look at those questions and answer them. We'll come back and review. All right, what new information did Handbook of Land and Water give us about how landforms can erode quickly? What did you have to say? Okay, landforms made of loose materials and landforms with cracks can erode quickly. So the second question, what are some examples of loose materials that we read about in hand the Handbook of Land and Water? I keep wanting to call it land book. Soil, sand, small rocks, and mud. All right. We'll have a chance to work with a chalk model in this video. And we'll also work with a sand model. Does sand or chalk better represent loose materials? Did you explain your thinking on that question in, in your packet? Let's see. Sand better represents loose material because it is made of smaller rocks. Okay. Based on our ideas, we will use the chalk to represent a stable material, and we will use the sand to represent loose materials. By using two models, we will be able to investigate why some landforms erode more quickly than others. Let's review the word stable and what we mean by that in this, in this unit of study. Stable is staying mostly the same. The same. All right, so let's move into modeling erosion. Turn to these pages in your packet and we are going to observe what happens to the chalk model first and record the, your observations on these pages. Remember, any time that we're looking at questions, you can answer them in the packet yourself. You can talk to a family member about them, or you can just think about them in your head. I'll review how we're going to do this uh, demonstration of the chalk model. First, what I'd like you to do is observe the chalk closely and then draw what the chalk looks like in the either in the packet handout or on a piece of paper. This is a close-up of the chalk. Okay. 
Then I will spray the chalk with water. Observe what's happening to the chalk and record your observations. And then you will draw what the, the, the chalk model looks like afterwards. Make sure you label your drawing. All right, I'm gonna pause the recording and set up the demonstration. So in the meantime, I'd like you to take this opportunity to get yourself ready. Hi everyone, it's Miss Benita and I'm back. I wasn't able to, create, to pause the video, so I had to create a separate one. We are looking at a model of chalk and I want you to look at your packet and draw what you see. At any time, pause the video so that you can draw and record your observations. All right, I'm going to start spraying and I want you to observe what happens to the chalk as I spray it. That's the sound of the sprayer. Some chunks coming off. Yeah, the water is a little cloudy, a little white. Okay. I've sprayed our chalk model, and now I want you to draw what you see and label the things that you see in this model. I'm also going to do the sand model. I'm going to show you the sand model in case I'm having problems with the pause function in this video. So here's the sand model. I want you to draw what you see in the sand model. And again, you can pause the video so that you can get some details in the drawing. And I'm going to I'm going to start spraying this one, okay? Here we go. Oh, not oh, a big difference, huh? It's really wearing away. Should have counted the number of sprays so I could spray them the exact number of sprays. But you can see a lot of the sand is floating in the water and making a pile over here. And you've had some wearing away right there. Okay, that was our sand model. All right, let's review what we saw in those two models. In the chalk model, I've asked you to observe and draw what the chalk looked like. Some of you might have just drawn blocks and chunks, right? And then as I sprayed, I wanted you to observe what, what was happening and record your observations. Some of you said the water is breaking off pieces of chalk, pretty small ones, right? The piece of chalk is changing shape. You saw a little bit of that, but it was hard to tell. And the water is turning white and cloudy. We saw, we definitely saw that. Then I wanted you to draw what you saw after I sprayed it, and I asked you to label your drawing. Did you do that? Okay, so we had a little bit of, of dents in the chalk, perhaps. Some of you wrote that there was white, the water was a white, there was a little swirl of white, and there were pieces of chalk. Okay. Now, we went ahead and did the sand model at the same time, so I'm going to jump ahead to that review. Okay, so let's see what we observed in the sand. A mound of sand, right? And then as I sprayed it, it was very different from the chalk model. Water makes holes or dents in the sand. We saw some wearing away. Uh, there were uh, chunks of the sand in the water. The, uh, the water broke it off and it moved it away from the mound. It was floating. Yes. And then I wanted you to draw and label it afterwards. Okay. Some of you said that there were pieces of sand in the water. 
Uh, some of it was floating. Okay. Now I want you to turn to this page in your packet and we're going to compare the two models. And we'll answer the que these two questions based on what happened in the video. Have you ever been asked to compare something? There's an old saying that you can't compare apples to oranges. So we're going to see if we can compare sand to chalk. All right, let's look at the let's look at these two questions. How was the erosion of the sand different from the erosion of the chalk? And which was more stable, the sand or the chalk? And why do you think so? Go ahead and pause the video and answer these two questions. All right, let's review. How was the erosion of the sand different from the erosion of the chalk? You say, oh, the sand eroded much faster than the chalk when I sprayed it with water. Yeah. Put that right there. Which was more stable, the sand or the chalk? Why do you think so? The chalk was more stable than the sand because chalk is harder than sand. Sand is not hard. It's made up of smaller pieces. Put that there. Now these questions, number four and number five, are in your packet for you to answer, or you can just answer them on a piece of paper. What was different about how the chalk and the sand eroded? When I sprayed the chalk, little pieces broke off, but when I sprayed the sand, bigger chunks broke off and fell away. The shape of the sand changed more quickly than the shape of the chalk. We hardly notice the, the chalk's shape changing, right? Which was more stable, the sand or the chalk? Why do you think so? The chalk was more stable because it is hard and solid. The sand was not stable because it is a loose material. All right. Let's review. How, let's review how we use these models to represent landforms. Both landforms made of solid rock and landforms made of loose material erode at different time scales. We saw that with the chalk, we probably would have had to spend more time with the sprayer to get the same amount of erosion as what we saw with the sand. A landform made of solid rock might take hundreds, thousands, or millions of years to erode enough to observe a big change. A landform made of loose materials might erode the same amount in a day. All right, everyone, thank you so much for working with me through this part of our lesson, and I will see you soon for the next. Bye for now. Hi, welcome back. I'm Miss Benita, and I'm helping out Miss Fung, my Denver teacher partner in this project of bringing you videos for the unit Changing Landforms. Today, we're finishing up part two of the second lesson in the fourth chapter, modeling how landforms erode quickly. There are two activities in this video, and we're going to continue to model, but this time we're going to model how wind erodes landforms. You will be watching a video, uh, a video inside a video actually, and if you have the packet to answer questions that are posed along the way, then you can use that packet to record your answers or any piece of paper that you have in your home and a pencil will do. Also, if there's a family member available to watch this video with you, the two of you can talk about what you're learning together. It's always nicer to learn things with others. Let's get started. We focused on water, but it's not the only thing that erodes landforms. Remember our, I'm gonna call it our, our thinking chart here. How can landforms erode quickly? We've been adding things to it. So let's think about what other things can erode landforms other than water. Write down some of your ideas. What do you think? Huh, okay. 
Let's dig into the handbook of land and water. I found something on page 14 that I'd like to read aloud to you. How beaches can change fast. Sometimes erosion happens quickly. Beaches are made of sand or other loose material, so they are not as stable as some other landforms. One storm can erode a beach fast because a lot of material can move at once. If storm waves and gusts of wind hit a beach with enough power, they can carry away huge amounts of sand in a single day. So we did mention big waves and powerful uh, rainstorms happening that can erode quickly. Let's add that other point here, gusts of wind, okay? Now, let's take a moment to visualize how wind could erode this landform, the sand dune. You will find the next set of questions in your packet. What did you picture in your mind? You may want to pause the video and think about these questions and talk them over with the family member and jot down some of your thoughts and we'll revisit them in the video, okay? All right. Oh, some of you said wind could cause the sand to blow off the top of the sand dune, causing the landform to change. I will now use a model to demonstrate how wind can erode a sand dune. The mound of sand represents a sand dune. Let's think about what blowing through a straw represents. All right, here's that video inside of video. Wind erosion model. This model will demonstrate how wind can erode a sand dune. This mound of sand represents a sand dune. It's our model. I will blow through the straw to model wind. Now observe what happens to the sand dune when I blow through the straw. It's a close up. Let's discuss what we observed. What did you observe happening when air was blown at the mound of sand? The sand moved. The shape of the sand dune changed. It even had a little divot in it. That's like a, like a little hole. What do you think would happen if we blew air at the chunk of chalk? Would wind cause the chalk to erode? Why or why not? We are using the chalk to model a rock landform. Wind cannot easily erode it because it is solid and hard. That brings us to a key concept. Wind and water can erode a landform quickly if the landform is made of loose materials. Remember, we're investigating these two cliffs. This one is uh, by the Recreation Center and this is a cliff nearby. Do you have any new ideas about cliffs? Let's think for a moment. Going back to our, our thinking chart, right? We can add that landforms made of loose materials erode quickly. Okay, this, we're going to end this video with this activity, introducing making models of streams. Again, streams are hard to study in real time because change can happen very slowly. So scientists use models to decrease that time scale so that they can study it. Think about the chalk model and the sand model we investigated. Why do you think we used both models in the same lesson? How did that help us better understand erosion? Again, these are questions that you can jot down your answers to in the packet. Just pause the video. All right. Using both models allowed us to compare what happened in each. We could then see how loose materials erode faster 
than hard or solid materials. Why do scientists use models? And why haven't we been, and why have we been using them, right? Because models help us to observe things that we really, that we can't really easily see in the real world. This book is about a water scientist named Chris, who uses a stream model to make observations and to answer questions about real, how real streams work. Why do you think scientists use evidence from models when models are so different from the real world? Be thinking about that. We will revisit this question in the next lesson and we will also be reading about Chris and how he uses models of streams in his work. There are differences and similarities between models in the real world. These differences and similarities help Chris, the water scientist, answer questions about streams. In this lesson, we used a sand model to investigate the idea that loose materials affect how fast a landform erodes. In the next lesson, we will build on that understanding that scientists make models to answer questions about the real world. Well, that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me, and I do look forward to seeing you next time. Take care.